Eskrima, the indigenous fighting art of the Philippine Islands, also known as Arnis, or Cali. It is one of the fastest and deadliest martial arts in the world. Although commonly perceived as a stick fighting art, it is just one component of a complete fighting system. It includes a mastery of short and long bladed weapons, as well as a variety of empty hand techniques. The spiritual home of this Filipino fighting art is the island of Cebu. Located in the center of the Philippine archipelago, Cebu has been a trading center and a confluence of cultures since ancient times. Cebu is also home to some of the greatest Eskrima masters in the world. The history of Eskrima in Cebu began in the 13th century when the Srivijayan Empire from Java ruled most of Southeast Asia. They were overthrown by the Majapahit Empire from Eastern Java and were forced to flee north to the Philippine Islands. The Srivijayan refugees settled in the central part of the archipelago in what is now known as the Visayan Islands. The Srivijayans were a warrior culture and were said to have brought the technology of forged blades to the islands. When the Spanish came in the 16th century, these Visayan warriors were already practicing a systemized form of warfare against other tribes. In April 27, 1521, Spanish explorer Ferdinand Magellan met his demise at the hands of these Visayan warriors in the Battle of Mactan. The Spanish returned in greater numbers and with the aid of superior technology, eventually subjugated the islands. After 300 years of Spanish colonial rule, there was a growing fear of rebellion the Spanish prohibit the Filipinos from practicing Eskrima. The Eskrima masters went underground and began training in secret, using sticks, bolos, and knives, since they are readily available to civilians. Eskrima doors soon made stick fighting an art form onto itself. No longer limited to blade-based linear strikes, the emphasis was now on speed and accuracy. Using the stick, 
meant that attacks could come from more angles and at closer ranges. Traditional linear is when you strike, it's like a blade. It's a blade pattern strikes, eh? It's like a blade. While uh, the snap wrist, the flicking strike, curving strike is abanico is part of them. It's with it. It's curving strike. The advantage of this is even if he blocks the strike, it still circles around the defense. Hits him. He blocks the strike, it circles around the defense. Nanil na pita igo ko na. Bisa kung sama pa niya, may igo ko na siya na. Igo. Pagana. Igo. Pagana kung gupo siya. Igo. Pagana kung gupo siya. Igo kaya po. Too dangerous to attempt with bladed weapons, Escrimadors could now perform disarming maneuvers, of which they have an endless repertoire. So, I'm going to go in there. 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 I'm going to go In the early days, each tribe or clan practiced its own system of escrima. These were closely guarded secrets, which were passed on from one generation to the next. Ang akong uyuan na si Arsenio Kamurnay, bautoy eskrimador, wap ang anli ni Gulapunti, wap at isa nga, eskrima lang. Ano, hangtod nga, naplat ko na akong amahan, tinuluan sa akong uyuan, akong uyuan. My grandfather and his uh, brothers have been practicing the art since 1890. Watch how they hit with the skein, using the single and double slashes, or the half slash. Kanyetes, uh, my father, they learned the cut on sila from my father and my uncles and from other masters. But when they meet with the Sabidras, we found the two Sabidras to have very good uh, techniques. That their screamer was superior. They adapted the Kanyetes as their uh, uh, first, uh, uh, among their first uh, fierce students. Kami eight brothers, akong eight seven brothers, and both Sabidras. Oh yeah, they must have gone to my my behind go. Yeah, pick the good one. Oh, that's the same practice. So I go, you go, you go. Oh, oh, you don't even go. I play some go. My team are doing my master. So I go, you go. That's the one you go to. You go. Okay. Kato ako ng papa. Pedim to ibalhe ni ang grupo sa left. Yung kusgan mo to ako ng papa. Kaya kaya iskuwi lamang po si Idiox Mune, kung mga manghod, iskuwi lamang po sila po. So, ako kay Primero, ako kay Bidi Badis kung umahan yun. Ako pa pa, atlet siya siya, gusto niya siya mga, mga martial arts. Before nga, noon, niya nana sa iyang umahan, nana sila yung mga dambil at una. Kaya kay magbiyahe man siya, at to mga laylay lugar, si Kihor, abot siya mga Bicol, mga isa-isla. Katawin siya mga eskrima, dahil kayo mga eskrima, tawag niya, sumbra, sukiti, Sumbra mo nang magpayong, payong kayo. Sumbra mo yung siyado. Kano, ano, ano, payong. Ang isos ako, ang ako mahal, mga eskrimador. Ang isos ako na, mga eskrimador. Plasa mo dugo.
Di kau mana punggungan? Malu bang mengko. So yang kena aku yang kau hanya ibu hi angkut nasi. Kau buat seperti ha. Semua nanti ni kau buat tau. So nana counter saya ni counter ni ya. Ibu ni kau. Jauh. So baru kena kau sihat ni. Kita boleh jual dok osum bagi papa, mungkin apa? Bagaimana? Karena situasi yang hopeless, no. Hamong flow ni apa dong dari? So flow nak apa? Padu padu om sendiri, padu om sendiri. Pasukan, balik dulu. Balik dulu. Tama flow nak apa? Nego siapa against nak sendiri? Eko ikan aku against ya, against. Against. Tujuh puluh sembilan tu. Muka bagus sendiri. was established in Cebu. The Americans encouraged the Filipinos to practice the right. So everybody, uh, you know, all masters, grand masters, they came out in the open, and that's how they started. So in 1920, with the Sabitra uh, uncle and nephew, they lead the group of Salvadors, they formed the first ever martial art club in the Philippines, Katong Labangun Fishing Club. The Bangun Spencer Club dismantled in 1930. Then uh, 12 masters revived. It's perheated by my father, the form du Paris. Isik isik dah hot, isik isik dah macam ni apa? Atau ni lain kan? Atau ni ahli atau yang dapat orang pelan tu buat travel ni? It seems the idea came spontaneously. The code of Paris, the best the name on the twelve fighting bodyguard of Emperor Charlemagne of France. Each member has his own style. Teaching is from style. They have this uh, larga mano, others bija largo, uh, medium range, others corto. In corto, they have different styles. And there were uh, masters who were only good in in the heads. There were masters who were good only in knife fighting. And there were, there were who specialized only in long blade or bolo bolo fighting. The perennially secretive masters now shared their techniques with one another. This exchange of ideas brought the fighting art of Eskrima to another level. Grandmaster Filimon, Momoy Cañete, was perhaps the most respected Eskrimador of his era. He served as the chief instructor and guiding figure of Doce Pares until his death in 1995. I was able to get my own life. 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 What's lovely now are the various movements of Professor Philemon Cañete. The using a wooden dagger, the various movements of Professor Philemon Cañete. The using a wooden dagger, Simon Mekanyete, kung panahon nato niya, moto siya ay uh, most popular sa armies, armies o sa, sa eskrima. Pero ang iyag yung most popular yun niyang uh, panyol system, kaya nagyong yung espada ay daga. A sword with banya katong yung bullwhip na tiguba. Niya, ang iyang system, bitawag niya armies eskrima sa Miguel Bani. Fighting and pain fighting. We're gonna 
advanced sight. Momoy as a leader is very, very honest, especially to his boys. He cares for his boys. Mugis to siya eh. Pinaka maayog yung bisag sa unsang paagid, kumbat, arnis, kuhaan siya, spare idaga, mugis to siya eh. Noon yun kayo. Black and fire of the Soviet Union. There's a strike, double strike, and the hook. He was trying to cut the professor's head, the rope, but look what happened. In the olden days, Escrimadors were known to be healers as well. They believed in charms and amulets known as anting anting, and the orashon a spoken prayer. 90% sa mga iskamador na ito doon ay words of power. Ang katawas tatay na ito ay orasyon siya. Parti pagpanambal. Pag hindi ito sa mga ji, hindi siya ipapila nga yung itamdan ba. Ito ang isuot niya mga parti pagpanambal. Katawas papa, he is not an ordinary person. He possesses also a talisman. He is a talisman. Doon natin siya anting-anting. Until his death, iyan ang bida. That is why dito siya din na rin ang tao para na po as his son. At ilan natin siya masuway na tirahan ng armas wa kabuto. Oo, wa, wa, ni Phil. Wa, agad isang to ba? Doon na dito siya protection ba? Kini mo na kita wang habak or amulet sa English or anting-anting. Ang unang tawa ni habak kaya ibakos mo niya sa di sa hawak. Mabuhat ni, doon na may kusog. Wala makusgan ka. Ika daw maabti ka. Katulod, di ka maigo. Kung maigo ka mga lindi, kasakitan. Sword name, shield name. Sword name, shield name. Check it, is to monitor, control, plan your attacking weapon. With your free hand. When you strike, black, there's always a chicken hand. May mo, agdo na po doon eh. Kaya naaman niya siya firme. Bisag po yung balina ko, bisag asa po siya dagan. Ini bawa lagi ni, okay. Bising untuk sensasi semua. Ini objek kamu, mu mu pak kamu sa aku pamatai ngah kamu. Mau ni, mui, mui modis bentar. Okay, this is how I check. I check you there, doing what you feel. Where you go next? Down. You know why he goes down? You know why he goes down? Because I influence his brain to go down. Why? Because of my check. Look at how I conduct the check. This little finger make him feel that there is resistance. Pull back a little. See? There is resistance. You go up. There is resistance. What is an area no resistance? That is where I want him to go. That is the area apparently 
open for target. May mo black phone ako siya, pag una niya. Bana ko, bana ko. Buko siya. Buko ako, Pirmi. Always may naka, Pirmi. Kaya kung mabante siya, mingo siya. Sorry, no? Ah, Pirmi. So when I do like this, I check. Automatically, he knows. There is resistance. There is resistance. There is no resistance. When he goes into it, no. No. Because my check just turned to defend it. He cannot see. Go down. There is. But there is no resistance here. So when he goes like that, will he attack here? No. I can just go. In 1948, 1949, 1950, up to 1952, those parish were rocked by a lot of intrigues and jealousies. Not only among masters, not so much. It was among the followers of the different masters. Each were trying to outdo each other, that my style, my master style, better than yours. The group uh, mainly uh, in, against each other, with the group of uh, Grandmaster Anshung Bakun and the group of uh, Grandmaster my uncle, Kako Ikanyete. And there were other groups, minor groups, but these two groups were just, they really hated each other too much, too much jealousy. Grandmaster Venancio, Anshung Bakon, a former pupil of Lorenzo Saavedra, was considered one of the best escrimadores in the Doce Pares Club. His skill won him many followers. Among them were Delfin Lopez and Timoteo Maranga, members of the Cebu City Police Force, who were known as formidable fighters. Katot Delfin Lopez lang, dako ka ito. Si Maranga, dako ka ito. Yung anong nagpatoon man niya, Arnes. Pag ito niya, pagkikita niya ang so, piting gamay sa... Ah, mana yang satu gembai anak sayur naik bunal kayak perannya kau mau masuk sayur naik bunal gembai anak sus bekasuai ni sus musang guling kalau sana boleh main bekasih. Nampi saya inbuntalin bangga dari dari saya makariak semua pinagis yang bunal dah gak bisa bisdi suai bunal parti dah bunga dipinsa dari saya makariak ngai saya yang kagoling mau pemagi mas napi teguang saya ngadi kagak takut saya yang yang idan ngak yang lihat mobil apa snapi nyak bubuk kau Ya, ya kalit istana gembai lagi kay dili lagi lagi dili gembai di istana lagi kay ya magi kay pro magsunod ang yahang atak naba. One time ansung bakon dunay nang hagan ni ansung bakon. Kalau diris talisa itu kedua. Dua kabuk grote meragug sungkut god. Bunal, nilihai si Ansyong Bakon. Moto, pag ego, pag sunod bunal, pag kaya doon may grote niya, tag-as pag-istanan. Isagang Ansyong Bakon. Mungin mo kita. Pag kaya na, bang! Pung ako sa dure. Gisin sa... Dagan ko. In 1952, early 1952, Bakun got out into the Paris with uh, Lopez, uh, Maranga in tow, then they put up their own club, Balintawa. Named after the downtown side street, where they held practice sessions, Anshong Bakun and his followers Develop the Balintawak style of a screamer. Kaya doon si Peros yan ato, doon ang mga garote, magandang amara man, amara, anak, anak. Hangtod nga, garote o ganting. Puntay daga na, puntay daga. Yung una-unang ansiyo nga, mita kuglain ini. Mag-imbinto kuglain mo to nga, one stick na lang. 
Balintawak fighters favored a brutal and efficient close quarter fighting style, more suitable to their urban environment. An intense rivalry soon formed between the Doce Pares and Balintawa clubs. They began to pit their most able fighters against each other in no holds barred challenge fights. They call it the Hoi Kotodo or Death Matches because every time you spar, it's like a duel. You have no headgear, no protector, and it's full, uh, full contact. It's fighting. Dueling was a long standing tradition for Escrimadors. When there were no wars to fight or conflicts to settle, they would seek out one another to test their skill. It was a common practice for the duelists to sign injury waivers before they fought. Severe injuries and even deaths were known to have occurred. Oh, sabot to siya nga. Ipilitan kita doa, magsabot ang magdawa ta. Ana, pero surrender la ubi ka guanta. Kung sabay kredit, ana ba? Kung sabay ka niya, may tagi yung nakakay kwarta. Wa, wa, nga, nagi ma. Dungo, gra. Mas mayo pa na nako. Saya na to. Bidungo ka sa talibon na to. Unka. Tanaw ka. You're not discriminator. You're not willing to fight. Nga na mo na. This dueling tradition was brought to Hawaii and California by Filipino migrant workers as far back as the 1920s. Prima stylist, all the masters before. They were just satisfied if they can beat their opponents in that match. Grandmaster Inting Karin of Doce Pares was a reputed veteran of numerous Juego Todo matches. In one famous incident, Inting Karin was attacked by four knife wielding assailants and survived. Si din ato, ang iyan ko para yung tingmuros while di ongoing ng pista sa Mabulo, minus papa ko sa night fighting. Bila na, bila na! Pati yung amigo, sa ito mga usugat, ibukod to sa mga parente sa tag-iya sa tindahan. Pag bukod na na, ni Agi niya, di pag Agi niya lain mo to, kung matapang ko siya ba eh?
In the main streets of Cebu, the knife is the most common weapon. Eskrima knife fighting techniques are considered some of the best in the world. Unlike the Chinese and Japanese martial arts, which were originated and practiced by monks and nobility, Eskrima comes from more humble origins. The Eskrima god was known to be the art of the poor people, was known to be the art of the bum, because some members of the Paris, they were criminal living side. They were, because they come from the very poor segment of society. Those Paris was just based in San Nicolas, in Pasel district, for many years. The Pasil San Nicolas district of Cebu was a known breeding ground for many famous escrimadores. In the area, the people of Pasil, they are the most notorious people. 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 Yeah, kung doon ay mga labinaga ng union, sa Lekohaon, either he moves lang sa striker or he moves lang sa cab. Ngayon na na ang life niya. Ngayon ang notorious nga, number one notorious sa Cebu, ang Pasil. Diyan ako nagdakbo. The image of an escrimador was that of a gunfighter, willing to accept any challenge simply for bragging rights. Club. Kedua nama yang hagis, nengat tu game kita nan.
In the early 1970s, Filipino martial arts began emerging into the consciousness of the martial arts world. Doce Pares was invited to perform a series of demonstrations in the United States. Yo negué primero dito. Onya kami sunod tumitakoy o dokwista kami sunod. Wala na mereka in early 75. Di pa dumusit ko nila dyan sa this is documented ba? Los Angeles. In the school of Dano Santo, Grupo Bruce Lee. Filipino Cali Academy. Abo na ko to so. What's your style? I don't know. What do you mean by style? Huwag doon may kalimutan ito sa style to si Paris. Dito naman sila, we just call your style to super style. Tinta, dito na, makindong style kayo. Here, we're going to get five pounds. Ang kakoy, yun is kutokobada. Kawitik-witik. Mumoy is San Miguel style. Ang kurturina. My father's love the money. Kaya kung papa, long range man. So we didn't get five by personality. Pag ito na mo, the demand quickened. Can you see this paredada? Night, blip, sit. You're surprised. You practically, you practically know everything. You say, don't know. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Back home. Yeah. Para mo, then are you, man. To them, you're surprised. Kay, you too good. Ukurto ka, kurto ka. Ragamano, ragamano ka. Ito kami kay kanaman. The art spread fast. Tungkol kay bago para sa mga tao, they talk to it. But when I came back, I think he had a silence. The best way to promote an art is to make it into a sporting event. It's like boxing, the sports, the football, basketball. But how can you? In every time we spar, we kill each other. No parents in the right mind will allow their kids to study with us when they know a week later somebody will challenge them to fight. We want to reach out to mm -hmm. all corners of the world. We have to band together. Civilized ourselves, civilized uh, our way of uh, sparring. That's the only thing. So I formed a committee to draft the tournament rules in Cebu Strema. When we have the rules, we cannot fight because we don't have equipment. So I designed the Hitler, the Hitler, the Gloves, the Hitler, the Design, 1976. My gears were so thin, not, uh, not too amply protected. But the, the body gear was too here. And sometimes we fight without gloves. I put in some gloves there, but some fighters, they're not used to it. They forgot. They fight. They, oh, I have no gloves. Stop, stop. <laughs> when we started holding the uh, formal tournaments, the coalition was always full because people thought that they were out to kill each other. For the championship, the people who are good, they're good at the ringside. They were good at the ringside, they were good at the ringside. They were good at the ringside. People thought it was just like the old Gohi Gotudo, it matches. But they found it out that we have the gears, we have protected gears. After the first national tournaments were held, Eskrima doors gradually shifted their focus from death matches towards organized competition. The bitter rivalries, which marked the age of Juego Todo, were coming to an end.
the World Eskrima Kali Arnis Federation, the largest governing body for the promotion of Filipino martial arts through sports, holds the World Championships biennially, with every second championship returning to Cebu. The fighting art of Eskrima is now practiced all over the world. My name is Heather Turnbull and I'm from Toronto, Canada. Tim Andre Murdoch from Norway. Ferenc Vanko from Hungary. Sarah Charles, I'm from Great Britain. Justin Lemke, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, USA. Andrea Cittarelli, and from Italy. I started when I was about 14 doing a screamer and I just fell in love with it. I started, uh, it was. It was the school I started at, did karate, and then once I got my coordination up, uh, I started doing Eskrima, and I, I felt like it was just a whole other world of, uh, of new, new things that opened up to me. It's exciting, it looks fun. Because I do a multi-system, it means I can do all sorts of things. It's not just stick fighting, I do some knife work, you know, some empty hands. There's a lot to learn, and you don't have to be good at everything. In Eskrima, we can have everything. The really fighting techniques, or just the coordination, or just having fun. Perché è una disciplina marziale particolarmente eh, interessante per la difesa personale ed è uno sport nuovo sul panorama marziale. It's an adrenaline. Once you learn and understand Filipino martial arts, it's very universal. It's an art within an art. You look for technique as well as combinations, equally blocking or defending. It looks like they're just pounding away at people, but there are blocking patterns, drills. Using abanico, which is higher strikes, lower footwork, you should be moving offline. Uh, if they're pounding away, it's very, very difficult to see the number of points, but essentially it's not just how hard you hit, but how many hits that you get in. And I think of Filipino, I look at Filipinos as leading the way, and I've been really impressed. Yeah, I think because they're taught to pick up a stick from so high, you know? It's just natural, it's just someone who comes naturally to me. It's in, inbred, you know, they're very fast with their hands. Oh, every Filipino fighter is very, very, very good. They, they are very quick, very strong. Uh, they fight from the heart. It's really, really good. Our guru or head coach came to the Philippines to train with many of the grandmasters and so we were inspired this time to come earlier. So for us this is an opportunity to come back to the home of our niece and learn from the best. Uh, but you'll see from the results here that the Canadians and many other countries are now beating some of the Filipinos. There might be a te technological transfer there from us to America because Americans and the Europeans, when they train, they train, they train hard. If you want to get anywhere here, you really have to learn. I mean, you really have to work at it. We don't necessarily have to do that back home because our people in school, they go, you know, seven, eight hours a day and, you know, homework. And that's it. Then they go play basketball, play baseball, go to martial arts schools, do other things. Um, we have time to do that. Whereas here, uh, Filipinos, in, just in education, they have to um, devote a, a large percentage of their growing up just to education. They don't have the time to devote to martial arts studies. Once the foreigner learn the Filipino martial art, they do it 24-7. You know, with us, I know life, I grew up here in Manila, I know it's hard to focus on martial arts. There are a lot of people in the Philippine martial arts, um, Filipinos that have migrated, um, people from Filipino families that migrated and then they were born later, other countries, um, Filipinos that have left and gone, you know, and started teaching in other countries. I think there's a lot of people who've had a chance to catch up and um, pass a lot of people that are still stuck here because we have more opportunity to train and practice at home. Weather conditions, nutrition is better, people have a chance to be a little healthier. Um, we have a lot more advantages for people um, to learn.
Scream is still spreading far and wide. It is still spreading far and wide. Ang kuan lang, ang tournament lang, tiri, sa Cebu, sa atong nakita lang, di na kayo, di na kayo intense ang competition. But it is spreading far and wide. Mas popular ka ron dito sa abroad, dili dito sa ato. Nga rin sa ato, it's not popular in mo. Ang mga second generation, ano po ka kaya interest? Mabuta na kayo ngayon ko nga, hindi ni ba ayaw, nagkaalam mo kawag tama, mas ni kuya na pa ang mga foreign arts, martial arts, kaysa eskrima. Ang eskrima, suppose ato kita nang, amumahon ba kay ato ako ni God. Dili ko ni ngayon nga, nga sa lain, kita'y nagbugnaan eh. Ang Pilipino, noon sa gawas nga, ato agin eh. Nga ato ini nga mumahon ta, nga. Wa may intes ang mga tao. Kung huwag man yung kamot ini, huwag yung barog ini pag uh, promote, kining atong uh, gugma sa atong iskri, sa atong arnes, sa atong Pilipino siya, mamatay na sa galing atong kamatayon, kaya mawara man. This is the best time. If they have not uh, recognized the significance, the beauty of the art, it is high time for them to realize now. Ano yung mga eskrimador role nga akong ilan na kunan ako? Pero nakumunin mo sila mga ansang hero sa atong sa atong nasyon, sa atong Pilipinas. Kaya kung wala pa na sila, hindi nila ilan yung Pilipinas nga may laki sila sa martial art. Me and my brothers were called that we were born with a stick in our hand. So, it's part of my life. Ang masihin ako sa ang naibawaan ako, ang ato sa mga katawahan niya, pamaagi, eh, ilang kung anong ba, makatabang po silang kugalingon, parte sa silipinsa niya, makahon-hon na sila na ako, guwan ako, nga mo ni, gatulo na ako. Hindi na dahil na sa mundo ko, hindi ko kapulat. Ang sukarun di mo ko pulang sema, kundi formal para na ako, part of my life. Why retire-retire ni? Ha? Saan pag retire mo, di ko na i-retire? Di ko na i-retire, di ka ka-retire. Isang pag mong tanong ako ni Lau niya, maabot na panahon, dili na sila mo. Ang kong ako ni Todo niya na, pero sa hilom sa okasing-kasing nalipay ko, ngayon ilang ginagigamit. Hindi na kalimun ako ni Todo na anak.
Mama. 